Can something inorganic create living, breathing life? It's a loaded question, and to answer it, we need to start at the beginning, the very beginning. It was the spring of the 1980s. My parents had me so that years later, I could come out to note that around 4.5 billion years ago, the Earth, much like an 80s punk concert, was hot, dangerous, and full of violent collisions. From there, organic compounds were formed, the great primordial stew began to cook, and presto, life on Earth. Some years later, enter Aristotle. You may have heard of him. After witnessing flies rise from rotting material, Aristotle theorized that it was possible for new life to generate from decaying, non-living organisms. For a while, Aristotle's theory was widely accepted by the scientific community, until just a blink in time later, relatively speaking, Francesco Reddy came along and crashed the party. In 1688, Reddy showed that decaying meat kept away from flies resulted in an obvious lack of newly formed maggots. Biogenesis, or the belief that every living thing was created from pre-existing living things, was born. That's when the trouble started. If all life is created from other life, then how were living organisms created when early Earth had no living organisms? In an attempt to solve this chicken or egg dilemma, scientist Alexandra O'Perrin ran a series of tests to conclude that within the brutal conditions of early Earth, life could have potentially sprung from simple organic compounds and did not necessarily need the aid of other living material. So how did early life arise from those simple compounds? One theory, presented by German chemist Gunther Wachterschauser, suggested that our early biochemistry came with a built-in set of chemical pathways that triggered complex life. He further hypothesized that those first simple compounds came equipped with sulfides of iron and other minerals, which when released, created the reaction needed to build complex life. Or simply put, early life could have acted like a firework that didn't need any outside reaction to explode. Another study, done by Zachary Adam at the University of Washington using various computer models, theorizes that early Earth's beaches were full of radioactive sediment that could synthesize self-starting fission reactions. This theory was backed by leading names in the scientific community who believe these radioactive conditions could have helped create complex polymers. If you're planning a trip to a radioactive beach this summer, we suggest SPF 1 trillion. And if you're not buying any of that, some scientists have theorized that early organic compounds could have arrived via comets that hit Earth. These comets would have allegedly been coated with tar-like organic material formed in outer space through the combination of simple carbon compounds and ultraviolet light. So, basically, we're space people. One of the most recent trends generated some buzz for reframing the question. Researchers at the Beyond Center for Fundamental Concepts in Science suggest that life may be characterized by its, quote, distinctive and active use of information, thus providing a roadmap for the emergence of life. This is in sharp contrast to a century of thought in which the transition to life has been cast as a problem of chemistry, with the goal of identifying a plausible reaction pathway from chemical mixtures to a living entity. To this day, there's still no uniform theory as to how early life arrived on Earth. I think we can all agree Cthulhu had something to do with it, right? From a superheated vent known as New York City, I'm Kegan, and this is Rocket Boom.